flavor notes to discover. Every sip of Woodford Reserve bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. From Toyota Stadium in Fusco, Texas, in the shadow of the National Soccer Hall of Fame, it's the 42nd annual Dallas Cup. Today, it's the U16 championship game featuring the Dallas Texans, who won bracket E, against Olympiacos football, who won bracket B. I'm Pete Stein, along with Deb Reeves. Glad you could be with us. The Dallas Texans play in the Elite Clubs National League, and currently they're in first place of the U16 Texas Conference with a 10-1 record, and they've certainly made their presence felt in this tournament. They have really been good defensively, Dev. Yeah, no goals given up through group play and through the knockout stages. Just really strong defensively. Guy McKaylee is their leading scorer. He's got three goals. They're one of just two U.S. teams to ever win the Supergroup title, the other one being FC Dallas in 2017. The Texans have such a rich history here, but Olympiacos will give them a tough match today out of Huntington Beach, California. They're one of the top-ranked teams in California and in the nation as we take a look at the Adidas starting lineups before the U16 game kicks off today. And for the uh, Dallas Texans, we mentioned uh, McKaylee being uh, one of the uh, leading goal scorers. And he's got four other players that scored a goal. They played really in low scoring games. Yeah, they really have only really scored seven goals for uh, through the group stages and knockout. But, you know, hey, it, it got them through to the finals. So they're doing something right. Fabian Orozco and David Rodriguez have been the leading goal scorers for Olympiacos. They each have two apiece. Orozco scored in the semifinals as Olympiacos beat FC Dallas 05 Premier side 1 0, and now they face the Dallas Texans. It's the U16 championship game at Toyota Stadium from Frisco. The kickoff is coming up next. Stay with us for coverage of the 42nd annual Dallas Cup. New Highlander, Mr. D? Yeah. It was time for a change. For something nicer. More refined. With plenty of... space. Comfy, Derek? Yes, sir. Elevate every ride in the spacious 2021 Highlander. Toyota, let's go places. excited about driving again in the new 2021 Toyota RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I found this way before you know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard.
We're back here at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. I'm Pete Stein along with Dev Reed. Glad you could be with us for our continuing coverage of the 42nd annual Dallas Cup. And today's game is brought to you by Toyota and by Coca-Cola. Well, we've already had a couple of teams from the Lone Star State lift the boot and ball trophy. Dallas will try to make it three today on through these first four games of championship weekend. Yeah, great opportunity here for the Dallas Texans. It's a club that is well known throughout the country through the years of producing top talent, facing a tough Olympiocas club here today. In goal today for Olympiacas is Diego Saldivar and Elijah Baruman is in goal for Dallas. The Texans and Olympiacos battling for the U16 title. Should be a pretty good uh, group of supporters here for the Texans. Looks like a good, good number of Texan fans out today. A gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Olympiacos wearing white, Dallas Texans in red. Jesse Ramirez hitting the ball and then out of play for an Olympiacos throw in. Actually, it'd be the Texans who get to throw in upon further review. the ball here is Isaac Valadez. He gets taken down. It'll be a free kick and Valadez holding his face. The referee today is Jay Norris. The assistants are Charles Rupert and Kevin Pham. Salvador Reyes is the fourth official for the U16 championship game. It's a good opportunity for the Texans right from the start. It'll be Guy McKaylee and he's been the Texans leading goal scorer with three goals in the tournament. Kaylee with the free kick from the left wing just outside the area. He's got four targets inside the 18. And he's moved the ball three times. The <laughs> official hasn't asked him to move it back. But he's brought it back to get a little bit better angle on this. All four targets are about 12 yards from goal. Sent in and scooped up by Diego Zaldivar. The Olympiacos goalkeeper quickly distributes up the left side, finding Pineda Jordi. It's a throw in for Olympiacos. We're into the fourth minute. Olympiacos playing dangerously in front of their own goal. See right away, the Texans aren't gonna sit back. They're gonna press high, try to turn them over in their own defensive third. This is a Roscoe for Olympiacos, trying to get out of their own end here. Finally getting some relief from the Texans' pressure as they get to halfway. Pounce has it. Sent forward, Olympiacos may have an opportunity developing as Orozco gets it in the corner. That's not a great pass. And then a foul call going down for the Texans was Isaac Valadez. Nice job by Valadez, just getting his body in front of it, shielding the player off of it, and drawing the foul.
Here's the free kicks and across halfway. Hilton gets a touch for Olympiacos, but turns it over. Here comes McKaylee. McKaylee goes down rather easily, but gets the whistle and gets a free kick, this time from the right wing. McKaylee was measuring that. He felt the push on the side, and I think he could have kept his feet going, but he just realized, you know what, that ball might be running out of bounds. I'm just going to go ahead and go down and get the call. Hagan Waish wearing the captain's armband for the Dallas Texans. McKaylee with the free kick from the left wing, just outside the, from the right wing, just outside the area. Gets parried away by the keeper, Saldivar, but stays inside the box. Is chased down by Hajamu to the corner. And a throw in coming up for the Texans. Looks like it's Torres with the throw in. Olympiacos gets it cleared. But they'll give up the throw. Alexander San Martin was the closest to it from Texans. who quickly move inside the box. An opportunity is created and with the volley with the right foot, McKaylee just missed. Well, the Texans leading scorer there. Gets that ball on a half bounce, just unable to get over the top of it. Sent it over the top of the goal. Well, you're right. The Texans just keep applying the pressure. And Valadez trying to get into the box. Loses it momentarily, but the Texans keep possession as Ussery has it for Dallas. Ussery to the corner. That ball's out of play. And it's a goal kick coming up for Saldivar and Olympiacos. See the organization right away by the Texans. They're quickly behind the ball, pointing out who has who, who has who. And again, a quick, another turnover. Olympiacos out of Huntington Beach, California, one of the top ranked teams in California and in the nation. And a team from California has won a Dallas Cup title three straight years. Actually, you can make that four because the San Diego right. Surf won a U14 title today. Yeah, what a performance they put on. They beat a team from Dallas. They did. Great well, performance. It's a clash we've seen a lot through the years. California versus Texas. Two soccer hotbeds. Yeah, absolutely. Texas has developed quite a few players, and there's one from Little Elm that's making news <laughs> these days, right? Yeah, well, uh, un <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> probably not the news that uh, he wants to be making uh, in the past 48 hours, but I think he'll get past that fairly quick. Weston McKinney played for the Texans at one point. Now Juventus, right? Does, yep, correct. Good to see him having success in Europe. We really want to see him have success with the U.S. national team. <laughs> right. But I think playing in Europe will help that. Absolutely. That's, that's going to help the U.S., in the future in the World Cup qualifiers. And It'd be nice to make an Olympics every once in a while. That would be, well, that's a whole other subject. That may, <laughs> that may take another, another Marcus day. Pounce with the ball into space here, and the Texans do a good job knocking that ball out of play to set up a throw, but it allows their defense to get back. And the Texans have been really good defensively, and a foul here is going to give Olympiacos a free kick, but I think we're seeing why they're so good defensively it's because they defend in the attacking zone. They do. They make a turnover in their opponent's defensive third, but here's an opportunity for Olympiacos. Coming from the left wing side. This kick just outside the area. And a diving save is made. Going to his right, Elijah Baruman, who really had not been tested before that, makes the save. 
Yeah, he moves across quickly to make that save. He's trying to sneak it in that near post. Elijah had it covered. Here's McKaylee. Played back to Uthry. Uthry plays it to Wish. Wish finds Ha Tomu, who plays it out wide to the right. And Olympiacos does a nice job denying an opportunity for Jason Torres. The ball is ushered across the end line, and it's a goal kick for Olympiacos. Chested down by Marcus Pounds. Trying to go over the top to get away from the Texans' pressure. But it's Valadez who eventually gets the ball for the Dallas side. A turnover for the Dallas Texans. A possible opportunity for Olympiacos, but coming low off his line to play the ball is Baruma. And the Texans waste no time getting back across halfway as they find Jorge Rivera. And he gets taken down and gets a free kick for the Texans. Well, the first three matches today were extremely clean. Yeah. But we've seen already here, this game's quite a few fouls already called early. Some of that's the Texan style of play, isn't it? It is. I mean, they're uh, very strong defensively and uh, physical team. And that, that stems from their head coach. I mean... Hassan, who's been there for years and years and years. We talk about all the players that have come through the Dallas Cup and played in the World Cup. And now we have a coach who actually played for Iran uh, in the World Cup back in 1978. Hassan Rudaki coaching this Texan side. You know, we talk about the quality players who come out of this area. Coaches have to get some credit for that, don't they? Absolutely, they do. Uh, Hassan's been a great one for years and years and years with the Texans. And Texans get a corner kick here. That's right at the top of the six-yard box, and Diego Saldivar comes out and grabs it for Olympiacos, but Olympiacos turns it over. Jimenez has it taken away. That's sent back inside the six. Saldivar hesitated, but then grabs it off a of bounce. Sent in by Isaac Valadez. Played nearly 12 and a half minutes, still scoreless. Olympiacos starting to get more of the possession as David Rodriguez moves in, but he has the ball stripped away by Torres. Torres sends it to halfway. Olympiacos claims possession there. Pounce has it in the center circle, sent to the right side. Approaching halfway is Jesse Ramirez. Comes back to Ramirez after a deflection from Rivera. Now a 50-50 ball, back to Ramirez, who's getting pressed by Valadez, sent over the touchline, it's a throw for the Dallas Texans. Yeah, good work. Texas crowd really starting to get into the game. Yeah, good work by the Texans again, just forcing the turnover. As soon as they lose possession, tons of pressure. Alden Usry trying to throw it up the left channel for McKinley, but turns it over. Now the ball sent to the far side of the pitch. Across the touchline, it's a throw for Dallas. In the 14th minute, still scoreless. Texans have been a part of this tournament for a long time. Going back to its really early days, back in the early 80s. They've been a powerhouse through the Dallas Cup. National championships. First place right now in the U16 Texas Conference of the Elite Clubs National League, 10 and 1. And then you add to that what they've done here in Dallas Cup, as they had two wins and a draw in bracket E and collected seven points with a plus four goal differential. They haven't been blowing teams out, but when you don't give up a goal, you only have to score once. That's the key. Olympiacos trying to get the first goal of this game as David Rodriguez makes a charge toward the box, but the Texans get the ball back. Olympiaco's starting to find their way. 
Orozco denied an opportunity, but a throw in for Ramirez and Olympiacos as he puts it at the feet of Hilton. Hilton plays it back to Santos who sends it to the left side. Not sure who that pass was intended for, but the Texans will get a throw. Those are the little mistakes that will come back to bite you in this game. Texans will punish you. You just can't turn the ball over, give easy, easy giveaways. Texans will definitely try to take advantage, but now it's the Texans with a little bit of a sloppy play here as David Rodriguez takes the ball away for Olympiacos and they get a chance to move into the attacking third. See what, both teams are doing a good job getting back on defense. Monera's denied a chance here as he's defended by Alexander San Martin. Nice work by San Martin. Martin there winning that ball, putting it out, out of touch. Trying to get the ball cleared for Dallas as Valadez didn't catch all of it. It's a 50-50 ball eventually won by the Dallas Texans. McKaylee is underneath it, he has it. Open on the left flank is Ussery. Ussery loses it to Orozco. One back by Valadez. And Valadez gets spilled by Marcus Pounds. So we're through the first 16 minutes, so both teams have had a chance to kind of get to know each other. Sometimes this is when the game really starts to heat up. Kind of had a chance now to probe the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. Adjustments can be made. We spoke about it in the previous matches. You, you know, it, it does take a while. I mean, these guys have played six matches in seven days. Legs may be a little bit heavy in the first five minutes, and hopefully they kind of get some of that out of them and get some energy. Wish taking the ball away, but it's shot blocked. And there have been a lot of whistles early here. Lots of small things, a little bit of grabbing here and there. The game's definitely hasn't been as free, free flowing as a lot of the other matches we've had today. Well, you pointed out as the age groups go up, the play gets more physical. There are gonna be more fouls. The games aren't gonna be quite as free flowing. The Texans get it to McKaylee. McKaylee keeps it low, doesn't get a lot of Velocity on that shot, it's pretty easy for Saldivar to handle as he moves to his right and then distributes out to Orozco. Okay, well he just doesn't catch up and cleanly. He had the time. Just couldn't catch it. Free kick for Olympiacos. Jay Norris trying to keep this game under control. Norris with a word for Hagen Weish, the Texans captain. Pounce winning the ball for Olympiacos. And then Alec Marino wins the ball for the Dallas Texans. That's a poor pass. It gets taken away by Pineda Jordy. Rushed into an open space for Maneras. Olympiacos will get the throw in the attacking third. We're into the 19th minute, still scoreless. Neither team has had what you would call a great scoring chance as of yet. Maruma did have to make a save earlier. Here come the Texans on the counterattack. This is Valadez moving up the left flank. That goes off Jesse Ramirez over the touch line. It's a Dallas throw in. It'll be put in play by Ussery. At the feet of McKaylee, back to Ussery. Sent back to Rivera. To San Martin, who plays it to the right side. Target at the top of the box is Valadez, but it never reaches him. Moreno gets ahead on it. 
at the feet of Waish. Pushed forward by Duanea. Thrown in by Ramirez of Olympiacos, trying to get it to David Rodriguez. Another throw for Olympiacos. The fan gets two points. Whoever, whoever was throwing the ball back in threw it right into the garbage can alongside the dugout. Was that a two or three? <laughs> That's probably a three. Well, we do have a little March Madness going on. Even though it's April? Well, yeah, well, you know, do they stop calling it March Madness? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Texas well represented in the NCAA tournament, so doing well in both soccer and basketball. But we could use more Division I soccer in, at the men's level here yes. in the state <laughs> of Texas. Yes. Very well represented on the ladies' side. That definite. Just not a lot of opportunities to play locally for Texas products. No. You can play at SMU. They've got a great program. And I have for years and years. And at the Division II level, Midwestern State has done very well. But there's just not a lot of Division I men's soccer programs. Right now, both teams are just having a really tough time getting a grasp of of the game. Just, it's it's uh, kind of a struggle in the neutral zone, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a sc sc scrappy match so far. Neither team being able to create much of anything. That cross intended for Rodriguez, who never had a chance to play. Valadez runs up on it for the Texans. He sends it out to halfway. Michaela knocks it down as he's being marked by Nathan Hilton. Gets it to Moreno. Rodriguez the target downfield for Olympiacos. He tumbles to the turf. There's no call. Play continues. Wainia also picking himself up off the ground for the Texans. The ball's played for Rivera. Pounce is there for Olympiacos and ends up on the grass. Free kick for the California side. Jaden Jimenez will take this free kick. Get it inside the area, but headed out by the Texans defense to Valadez. Valadez gets it to Ha Chamu, who crosses halfway. Valadez making a run up the center forward channel. Ha Chamu gets taken down, and there's the yellow card. That's good to see the yellow card coming out early. That'll hopefully keep some of these fouls from happening, that knowing that the official is going to blow it and give you a card quickly. And I wonder if that's not an accumulation. Rodriguez picks up the yellow card. The first card shown here in the 24th minute with the U16 championship game still scoreless. But it's been physical. There's been a lot of fouls in this game in the first 24 minutes. Sent into the area. At the top of the six-yard box, it's poked wide by Moreno, who got a right foot on it, but couldn't get it on frame. Saldivar breathes a sigh of relief. Alec Moreno, just with a little toe poke, nearly squeezed that one in. Yeah, just couldn't get enough of the ball on his foot. Squeeze that pass. Olympiacos. Trying to get it out of their own end. Wynia knocks it down for the Texans in the middle third. Valadez with a little bit of a heavy tuck. Olympiacos again trying to get it clear. Chested down by Weish. Across halfway, played by San Martin. Here comes Olympiacos. They get it to David Rodriguez. San Martin wins the ball away. That's a nice takeaway by San Martin. Valadez receives the pass. He has it poked away from behind. Fabian Orozco making that play to win the ball for Olympiacos. Well, 
Roscoe sending it straight up in the air here. Kept in play by the Texans, Ussery. Moreno to Weish. Back to Wainia. He sweeps it back to San Martin. Here comes Moreno up the left side. Ussery with a nice pass. McKaylee has it. McKaylee chips it inside the 18. Valadez goes for a swinging volley. And then a shot that McKaylee did not catch cleanly. Looked like it was going wide when Saldivar grabbed hold of it. Right now, you just kind of wonder where's the goal is going to come from. I mean, as scrappy this match this has been, you know, there's, there's not a lot of <laughs> opportunities for either team. Orozco trying to leave this one for Ramirez, but it's over the touchline and it's a throw in for Dallas. Orozco and Rodriguez each have two goals in the tournament. For this Olympiacos side, Olympiacos scored four goals in each of their first two matches, defeating FC Dallas 05 Navy and Dallas Texans U16 side in bracket B. Well, Texans had two teams. That can be confusing. Well, combined. In group play and knockout stage, both of these teams only conceded one goal. And uh, we're, we're kind of seeing that right now. It's just a little bit of a defensive stalemate. Olympiacos played a scoreless draw with Houston Rayados in their final group stage game, and then won on PKs against Crossfire 05 in the quarterfinals. And Orozco scored in the 48th minute as they beat FC Dallas 05 Premier in the semifinals to get to this point, the U16 championship game, now facing the Dallas Texans. The Texans played a scoreless draw in their first game against Real Salt Lake of Arizona last Sunday. They followed that up Monday with a 2-0 win over Santa Clara Sporting as Hodge Mu and Guy McKaylee each scored goals in the second half. McKaylee and Valadez would score a 2-0 win over Juventus of Florida in the final group stage game. And then McKaylee scored against Solar Academy, a 1-0 victory in the quarterfinals. Rivera and Ordonez scored in a 2-0 win over Houston Dynamo CDP in the semifinals, which got the Texans into this U16 championship game. Both Olympiacos and Dallas had found it going tough in the attacking third here as we play 28 minutes, we're still scoreless. Another foul called. Olympiacos will get a free kick. Yeah, it's just fouls like this off the ball. That just really kills the flow of the game. Doesn't allow either team to have any continuity. Ramirez. To Orozco. Orozco maintaining possession in traffic, gets it to Pounce. Pounce taken down from behind. The official says Olympiaco still has the advantage. Rodriguez gets to the top of the box, but no further as Alexander St. Martin sends the ball out of play. Olympiacos will get a throw in, but they were hoping for a lot more than that. Rodriguez finds the chest of Pineda Jordy. Jordy draws a crowd. He goes down. No whistle from Jay Norris there. And the Texans move out of their own end. Get to halfway with a pass to Hodge Hamu. He sends it forward to McKaylee. McKaylee's got Valadez at the top of the box. Instead, tries to work a one-two. Valadez comes over, gets ahead on it. 
Gets it to the feet of Rivera. To Valadez out wide. Headed away by Roscoe of Olympiacos. Texans keep possession. Wainia has it. Now the captain, Waish, to Ussery. Back to Waish, to Wainia. Wainia finds Moreno. Moreno with a nice move to get past the defender, Hilton. Laid it out for Valadez, who couldn't catch up to it. It's a goal kick coming up for Olympiacos. Again, once again, that offensive third just lacking a little calmness, lacking that killer final pass. The Huntington Beach side working their way out of their own end. Jordy plays it to the left side. Olympiacos gets into the middle third. Waish is down for the Texans on the near side. He may be dealing with a cramp the way he's acting. The Texans have won the ball back, but Waish is still down. And now the Texans notice that their captain is down and send the ball out of play, and Waish will get attention from the training staff. Waish looks like he may be done for the day the way he's reacting. Very well could be, and you see a lot of the players coming to the sidelines right now, getting a little bit of hydration. By Texas standards, it's really not that warm of a day. It's not terribly humid. It's actually an ideal day to play. No, you couldn't ask for a better day to play. But you still have to hydrate. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's a day like this where you forget to hydrate. That's a good point. You're, you're thinking, it's fine, it's not that hot. Right. But Waish was really pounding the ground, so you get the sense he, it might he questions whether or not he'll be able to continue. Yeah, and the way the trainer's looking at him, it may be a little bit more than just a cramp. But they're definitely taking their time with him. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't see what happened to him. He's being helped to his feet now, but he's not able to put much weight on that right leg. They are giving him some water. I didn't see any magic spray being used <laughs> no, here. I didn't see any either, but See if he can walk this off, and he's taking off the yep, captain's taking band. off the captain's armband, and that's an indication that he's coming out of the game. Well, he took it off, but he's he took it off and just threw it to the side, and he's still not come across the touch line yet. But he's going to have to come out of the game. Now, he could re-enter. They don't have to necessarily sub him out yet. Right. Play restarts. Not sure why he took off the captain's armband. They're going to give it back to him, though. So Baruman stands on the ball for the Texans. Play resumes right now. The Texans are playing a man down. Waish has not been waved back in. Waiting to get word from the referee, Jay Norris, and he hasn't even looked that way. No, he has not given him any attention. Now he's looking to the sidelines, but still hasn't given him, given him a glance to get back into this game. Moreno sends it to McKaylee. His shot is blocked by Santos. Corner kick coming up. And now Wish will be waved in, so looks like he's going to continue on. It'll be a corner kick for the Texans. This corner coming in the 35th minute. 
the second quarter for the Texans. And again, coming off his line, Saldivar grabs it at the top of the six-yard box, quickly distributes, and Olympiacos gets only as far as the middle third. They'll get a throw in from there. Well, they say defenses win championships, right, Pete? That is so what they say. We got Offense sells <laughs> tickets, defense wins championships. You got two teams here that play some solid defense. So where's the goals going to come from, from either side? What's going to spark this game? This, this game is begging for a goal. You get the sense it's going to be a set piece. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna come from the run of play. This ball is sent in. Again, the Texans are able to clear it. Out to midfield for McKaylee, who gets pushed around and he's down on the ground. Quick restart for James Wynea, who sent it to the right side for Jason Torres. Moreno has it. Trying to switch it to Ussery, but loses it to Olympiacos as Orozco comes away with it. Then Orozco with a poor pass. The passing hasn't been real crisp in this match so far. McKaylee settles the ball just outside the area on the left side. Plays it up top to Rivera. Into the box for Valadez, who's scrambling. That ball nearly crossed the goal line. A, a desperate save made. And keeping this game scoreless was Christopher Santos. Man, alive, one more roll, and that ball would have been a close to goal line. Yeah, Santos there, he cleared it off that line. We'll get a second chance to look at this one here. Ball's played through, gets behind. You were asking how we were gonna have a goal scored. It's gonna be something oh. like that. <laughs> well, lucky for Olympiacos, there's not a review. You think it went all the way that across? That was across the line. Yeah, great camera work there to show that. That ball was clearly across the line. Nonetheless, it remained scoreless. Hassan Rodaki is not going to want to see that replay. <laughs> In the 38th minute, the Texans looking for a chance. McKaylee let that ball go by. He's not happy with the pass from Marino. You know, he you say, okay, that was a goal. So difficult for the official on the far side who's trying to have to look through basically two goal posts and a couple and, and pairs of legs. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, a couple pairs of legs to, to make that call. It's, it's definitely a difficult call to make. It, it is a tough call. And you know, from our vantage point, Deb, I didn't think it went across looking at it live. Right, no, we have a great view of it. You couldn't really tell. 100% until we saw it in the replay. So the Texans may feel like they should be up 1-0. Maybe not, they haven't seen the replay. <laughs> so we're scoreless in the 39th minute. There should be quite a bit of time. Fair amount of stoppage time Got coming up on. here. Certainly had a lot of stoppages. And we'll have a substitution. Olympiacos making a change as Alexis Ocampo comes into the game. Campo coming in for Andrew Rodriguez. We're scoreless into the 40th minute as we wind down the first half here at Toyota Stadium in the U16 championship game. Texans 
had the best opportunity. Valadez tried to poke one in, may have, but it was cleared off the line by Christopher Santos, according to the officials, late here in the first half to keep this a scoreless tie. Most of the action has been right here in the middle third. Orozco has a shot blocked. Valadez pushes forward, crosses halfway, gets it to Rivera, but the Texans not able to really do anything once they get into the attacking third, and there's only been two minutes added on. So they're really just accounting for the, they're just really accounting for the waste right. injury there. Right. And Waish has stayed in the game, and this is Waish right here trying to win the ball for the Texans. It looks like he's moving okay. Moreno to Ussery. Ussery has Valadez along the touch line. That goes off of Jesse Ramirez. It's a throw in for the Texans. Thrown in to Moreno. Moreno. And to work his way through traffic, gets it to Valadez, maybe not intentionally, but it did get to Valadez. This will be played back, and Elijah Baruman, who hasn't seen any action in a while, comes well off his line and plays it to Wainia. Pounce for Olympiacos. Has it taken away by his opposite number, Jorge Rivera. And Rivera down on the ground, holding his face, writhing in pain. As we're into stoppage time, we may have more added here because the training staff is going to have to come out and tend to Rivera. We didn't see what happened on that situation there, but he went down. Appears to be okay. The training staff. Doesn't come on, so play can continue without Rivera going off. Wainia restarts play with a long ball into the area, then bounces through. Ocampo, who just came into the game, was there defensively for Olympiacos, but gives up the corner kick. It's the third for the Texans. Talked about giving up these late goals right before halftime. Don't want to give one up here. Rivera takes a shot, sails it high and wide as the whistle sounds, ending the first half of play. We've played 40 minutes in this U16 championship game at Toyota Stadium. There's been some action. But neither team has managed to score a goal. It's the Dallas Texans nil and Olympiacos nil at the half. New Highlander, Mr. D? Yeah. Well, it's time for a change. For something nicer. More refined. With plenty of... space. Hey, Derek. Yes, sir. Elevate every ride in the spacious 2021 Highlander. Toyota, let's go places. excited about driving again in the new 2021 Toyota RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I've felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more.
style, performance, power, pancake, turtleneck sweater, aardvark, Worcestershire, or Shire, I guess. It doesn't matter what I say, the Camry speaks for itself. Toyota, let's go places. First 40 minutes have been a real struggle for the Dallas Texans and Olympiacos. Today's game is brought to you in part by Toyota and by Coca-Cola. Glad you could be with us for the U16 championship game here at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, home of FC Dallas in the shadow of the National Soccer Hall of Fame. And uh, they're not going to put this first half in the Hall of Fame by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it, it's been a tussle. A lot of the game has been played in the middle third. Well, we kind of expected that. I mean, two teams that are very good defensively, and uh, just neither team has really given much on the offensive side. And so we got a defensive struggle going on right now. The Texans may have had the best chance, may have actually scored a goal. The ball may have crossed the goal line. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first 40 minutes of action here at Toyota Stadium. A couple of free kick opportunities early in this game, and there you see Bruman making the save for the Texans. This is McKaylee who came in as the leading goal scorer in the tournament for the Texans, but that save was made by Diego Saldivar. Moreno pushing that ball wide as the ball was sent in over the top. And this May have been a goal upon second look, but the officials did not rule it as a goal, so there we are. Scoreless through 40 minutes. The Dallas Texans and Olympiacos from Huntington Beach, California, trying to win another boot and ball trophy for the state of California, and they've done that many times through the years. In fact, the team from California has won a Dallas Cup title three straight years here at Toyota Stadium. It's the Dallas Texans nothing, Olympiacos nothing. The second half still to come and more on the history of that. I'm here to compare the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 to the iPad Pro. Surface Pro has a built-in kickstand. iPad Pro, iPad Pro is just a tablet. Surface is a full computer and a tablet. And now, the price. has enjoyed a rich history of combining marquee teams with talented up-and-coming players and the ability to forge long-lasting friendships and memories across many nationalities and cultures. Let's take a look at the proud history of the Dallas Cup.
7, the iPad Pro. Surface Pro has a built-in kickstand. iPad Pro, iPad Pro is just a tablet. Surface is a full computer and a tablet. And now, the price. With over 200 flavor notes to discover, every sip of Woodford Reserve bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. Dallas Texans and Olympiacos in a struggle through the first 40 minutes. It's a scoreless tie with the U16 boot and ball trophy on the line here this afternoon. And the second half is brought to you by In-N-Out Burger the official burger of the Dallas Cup. These two teams hungry for a victory this afternoon, hoping to leave the Dallas Cup as U16 champions, but what's gonna have to happen in order for one of these teams to claim victory? Neither of these teams are have to find some creativity inside their offensive third. There's just nothing there in the first half. It's been a defensive stalemate from the very beginning. Guy McKayley kicking off, and Moreno sends it out wide to Torres. Torres plays it back to San Martin. And that goes all the way back to Baruma. Baruma to Moreno, who delivers a one-touch pass to his left. Sent ahead to Rivera. The Texans get into Olympiaco's territory. The Huntington Beach, California side getting back defensively. And this is where the creativity has kind of died out for both sides, really, as they approach the attacking third. Exactly. And we've seen a lot of this, a foul and a restart for Olympiacos. That just killed the game. It just really just killed the game in the first half. No real flow, neither team able to get in to a rhythm. And it's not the fault of Jay Norris. No, not at all. He's calling what he sees out there. It's a little things off the ball that are causing the problems. Jay Norris is the referee. Charles Rupert and Kevin Pham are the assistants. Salvador Reyes is the fourth official. This tournament has a reputation for excellent officiating, which through the years has been why they've been able to attract such great international teams. They feel like they can come to Dallas Cup and they won't get a homer job. Exactly. Through the years, all the best officials, youth officials in the country and in the world come here. And it's a great training ground for them. And just as some of the players you'll see years later in the World Cup, you see some of these officials officiating FIFA World Cups, ladies and men's. We've had already three well-officiated games today, and Jay Norris in charge of this match. The Texans trying to take control here. Valadez gets to the byline, but not able to do anything with it. Yeah, Valadez just runs out of real estate there. Unable to clip that ball back over. A goal kick coming up. And Olympiacos makes me nervous every time they have that pass back. I just think that's not such a great idea, but they get away with it. Up the left side, Rodriguez gets all the way to the byline and then goes down, taken down by Alexander St. Martin. Moreno finding Weish, who I really thought was going to have to leave the game when he went down with an injury in the first half, but he's come back and seems to be moving okay. David Rodriguez steps in front of him here. Manieras goes down for Olympiacos as the Texans get into the middle third, cross halfway into Olympiacos territory, but get no further than that as the ball is switched over to Jaden Jimenez. Santos trying to find Jimenez. Valadez deflected it, but it gets to Jimenez. Jimenez trying to work a one-two with Ocampo, who has come in as a substitute, came in late in the first half. This is Rivera moving up the middle, playing it to the right to Weish to Valadez. Back to Weish. Weish being marked by Ocampo, who sends it over the touchline, giving the Texans a throw. Weish will put it in play. 
Ball gets away from Weish, and it's a throw in for Olympiacos. It'll be put in play by, first I thought it was gonna be Jimenez, but it looks like it's gonna be thrown in instead by Ocampo. The Texans get it. Valadez has it on the edge of the attacking third, gets it to Weish, who moves in to the top of the box, plays it in. Then the Jordy shot is blocked, pardon me, the uh, Hodge Hamu shot is blocked. That gets headed back toward the attacking third by San Martin. Marino wins the ball atop the center circle. Gets it to McKaylee. McKaylee plays it right to Hajamu. His service is blocked. Comes all the way out to Jason Torres. The collision there leaves a Texan sprawled on the ground. Another collision takes out an Olympiacos player, and that one draws a yellow card. That's the second card issued. Andrew Rodriguez was shown a card in the 24th minute for Olympiacos. Tackles were just flying in there for the last 30 seconds. And again, just a lot of scrappiness. And you, you said it in the first half, Pete. Where, where's a goal going to come from? You know, and you said set piece. It has to be a set piece or, you know, or, or a mistake of some sort. But again, you see these tackles coming in, flying in from behind there. Easy call for the official. Valadez getting the yellow card in the 46th minute. So each team has seen a yellow card. Neither team has seen a goal. And you're right, Dev. It's been a struggle for both sides just trying to create an opportunity to score a goal. Throw it here for Olympiacos in the attacking third. Ocampo will throw it in. Knocked down by the right foot of Manieras. Played out to Pounce. Pounce gives it a go. Why not take a shot from distance? But this one is over Barubin and the goal. And it's a goal kick coming up. We'll have a substitution for the Texans. You see Pounce on this ball, strikes it in instep. Sends it clearly over to goal. And an early substitution, as you mentioned, Pete. Substitution this early, just wonders if it's an injury. Substitution's coming off. It's, yeah, it's not a Texan substitution. It's going to be Justin Torres coming in for Olympiacos. He had a bib on. I thought it was a Texan. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little confusing. Torres for Olympiacos who's coming in. Well, you see the red bib, it's all night, what you think. So. so Torres comes into the game and replaces Manjares. Yards had a bit of a frustrating day. Ball rolled to the feet of Ocampo. Jimenez puts up a 50-50 ball that Torres, the sub, gets underneath. Little cheeky back heel by Orozco trying to create an opportunity. This may be a chance for Olympiacos. It's pushed in deep, but a sliding tackle from behind denies David Rodriguez a chance to get the shot off, but it will give Olympiacos a corner kick, their first of the game. Yes, you want to come in there, sliding tackle to eliminate that chance. The corner kick is played out to Ocampo. And Ocampo will send it into the mixer. Gets headed out. Thought Jimenez might play that ball in front, but they went out to Ocampo. Nonetheless, they got the ball into the area, but not able to make anything of that corner kick. Ocampo.
Campo has it along the left side. Hilton looks upfield for a target, just sends it out of play. And we mentioned this in the first half too, Devin. Did some poor passes in this game. Yeah, this game, you hate comparing a lot of the other finals we've seen, the three other finals we've seen this morning, this game's definitely lacked. We haven't seen the same quality yeah. in this game that we've seen in some of the younger matches. I don't know that we've seen many teams over the years play much better than the FC Dallas U15 side played earlier today as they won a championship. Houston Dynamo started the day by winning the U13 title. And the San Diego Surf, I know you were impressed with their U14 side. Yeah, really impressed with their side. Just uh, played a really, really strong game. Really good on the ball, a lot of fun to watch. Players are very good technically. Free kick here for the Texans. Sent in by the left foot of Wainia. And another foul called. I believe that the player shaking up there is Nathan Hilton, but he's back up on his feet now and appears to be okay for Olympiacos out of Huntington Beach, California. Yeah, not a lot on that foul, but just maybe clipped the ankles and the official was right there to make the call. Yeah, that's all we've seen, right? Teams from California and Texas today, <laughs> am it. I right? That's it, that's it. Two proud states. But obviously with the way you have the restrictions in place, international teams haven't been able to make their way here. David Rodriguez sending this ball ahead to Torres. And then Torres not able to get past Wainia, who's playing some great defense here in the second half. He's come up big here a couple times here early in the second half, but an opportunity for Olympiacos. A corner. second corner kick for Olympiacos in the 52nd minute. I wasn't crazy about the way they played the first corner kick. Let's see how they <laughs> played the second one. Well, they play a short one. Just outside the area to Jimenez, and then the shot forces Bermudez to move to his right and make the save. Yes. So the Ruman has seen a little bit more activity here in the second half. And here come the Texans on the counterattack, looking for Haj Hamu, who's making the run up the center channel. Moreno has it in the center circle. Well, he couldn't control it, and it's turned over to Olympiacos. Torres has it for the California side. Gets it to Jimenez. Played back to Pounce. Again, I don't know if that's a poor pass or a poor communication. Yeah, second straight ball. Olympiacos here, the second half, just playing out of Playing the ball out of play. Pounce let that ball go by. I think he had somebody behind him. This ball will be thrown in by Torres. Finds Rivera. Gets across into the area, but it's quickly cleared out. And then headed by Marcus Pounce. Throw in for Olympiacos in the 53rd minute as we remain scoreless. Looking more and more like this might come down to a PK shootout. Uh, Pete, I was thinking the same thing and I was really hesitant on saying that. Oh, was I supposed <laughs> to hesitate? <laughs> and, uh... Here comes Olympiacos. Orozco has other ideas, Baruma scrambling. It will be a goal kick. And we got a lot of players limping around out there. <laughs> it's been a long week for both of these teams. It's been a physical game here for the U16 championship. Baruman left a big juicy rebound there. And Olympiaco's not able to capitalize on it. Yeah, it's a well struck ball. Here comes Weish. He's one of the players that's been shaken up today. Here's a nice through ball in to Haj Hamu, but again, the Texans are denied. They'll get a throw in.
Torres with the throw in. Once he retrieves the ball, he's in no hurry. These do look like two tired teams, teams that have played, are playing a sixth game in seven days. But you get to the championship game and it is a test of endurance. It is. One of these teams just needs to find that little bit of spark, a little bit of innovation in the offensive third because the goal is going to change this game. It's going to open it up. There's definitely going to be more chances created if somebody can get a goal here. Pounce accelerating across halfway, left to Rodriguez. And Rodriguez gets taken down, but there's no call. The Texans win the ball. And here they come, moving up the middle with Rivera sending it to the left side for Valadez. To McKaylee, who's led them in scoring here during the Dallas Cup. There's another turnover, but <laughs> Libiacos gives it right back. Weish gets it and plays it to Torres. Not only do the teams look physically fatigued, it looks like there's some mental fatigue out there as well. It's hand in hand. Yeah, the Jimmy Johnson, who coached the Dallas Cowboys here, always said uh, fatigue makes cowards of us all. That's right. But it is the finals. It's the finals of the Dallas Cup. And if you can't find a little energy here in the second half to get your team on top, when can you? So just going to dig deep. Moreno to Rivera to Weish, and Weish is asking his teammate, what are you doing? Where are you? This is the kind of game that's got to drive coaches crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is frustrating for the coaches. Because they expect you to execute. Right. It may be a sub that makes the difference in this game. It may be a player who comes in late who changes the complexion of the contest. And maybe that'll be Brandon Montoya who's coming into the game for Olympiacos. It's their third substitution. Remember, they get six. They have, in theory, you have seven reserves available to make six substitutions. Fabian Orozco goes out of the game here for Olympiacos. Now, because of injuries or an accumulation of yellow cards, you may not have a full complement of seven players that you can tap into for those six substitutions. And then I don't think the Texans have made a substitution yet. No, I don't believe so either. I don't think they have. You do think, like you said, though, a pair of fresh legs out here would do one of these teams good. They need that spark, they need that energy to lift them up. Valadez has certainly been trying to provide that spark for the Texans, but just hasn't been able to make the play yet. Moreno gets it to Weish. Weish plays it to the touchline for Hajimu, and Hajimu is certainly a candidate to make a difference-making play. Weish sends it into the area, it gets cleared out to the feet of Hajimu. A 50-50 ball that Hajimu nods into the area, but it gets cleared by Olympiacos. Rodriguez nods it forward, pushes it across halfway to Dallas territory, moving up the left channel, and goes down along with Jason Torres of the Texans, who's called for the foul. And Torres is saying, hey, I was grabbed by Rodriguez. Why is the foul on me? Jimenez ready to restart play for Olympiacos. Rodriguez didn't have a full jersey there. Here's a set piece that might create an opportunity. Able to get it into the area to the top of the six yard box, but Maruman is all over it, reaches up and picks it out of the air to keep this a scoreless tie in the 59th minute. And here come the Texans. Moreno in the center forward channel. Back heel pass from McKaylee on a give and go. McKaylee has scored! 
McKaylee is given the Texans a 1-0 lead in the 60th minute. As we approach the one-hour mark, the Texans break through. You see a nice little back heel there. And McKaylee receives it back and just finishes it. Keeper's moving to his right. I think he's going to go to his right. Ends up putting it up upper right hand corner for a good finish this is exactly what the game needed I think it was Valadez with that assist but McKaylee made that happen boy that really energized the Texan supporters here at Toyota Stadium and now Olympiacos is going to the bench you're gonna bring in Donovan Sandoval, their fourth substitution. Texans just have to hold on for another 20 minutes. You were wondering where the creativity was gonna come from. If either team had any creativity left in them, that was a really creative. I was gonna say that might've been the most creative miles. goal we've seen today in the four games we've covered here. Very well played. How about that? We were starving for that one. Just when we were about to give up on a goal being <laughs> scored, McKaylee comes up with a stroke of brilliance. McKaylee to Wage, Wage into the area. McKaylee not able to catch up to that one. It's controlled by Diego Saldivar. Torres lost it. He thought the ball went over the touch line, but Moreno plays it to Weish. Weish has Hodge to move in the right channel just beyond halfway. Goes to McKaylee. He gets a one-touch pass to Hodge move back to McKaylee. McKaylee looking for more, but a sliding tackle denies him entry into the area. It's cleared out to Weish. Rivera has it. He spilled along the touch line. Throw in for the Texans. Boy, Olympiacos really did look dejected after that goal was scored by McKaylee in the 60th minute. There was a foul called, so this is a free kick. Hajimu gets it back from Rivera, then plays it for Moreno, cleared out. Olympiacos now trying to get it out of their area. As Jimenez catches up to it at the touch line, gets it to Torres. This is Moreno for the Texans. Rivera playing it back to Jason Torres. Torres along the touch line. Goes back to Alexander San Martin. Here in the 63rd minute, the Texans leading 1-0 after McKaylee created a scoring opportunity on a nice little give and go. McKaylee put it in the back of the net to give Dallas a 1-0 lead. We've had two Texas teams already lift the boot and ball trophy on the first day of championship weekend. Houston Dynamo winning a U13 title and a really talented FC Dallas Academy team won the U15 championship earlier today. That was a great match. Good performance by FC Dallas. Texans trying to become the second Dallas team to win today. Give this tournament a little local flavor. We're in the 64th minute. It's been a while since Olympiacos ventured into Dallas territory. You'll get a throw in here from Sandoval who came in as a sub, but that's off the head of San Martin. Landing at the feet of Nathan Hilton. Hilton plays it into space, but he doesn't have a teammate there. 
that's been the story all day for Olympiacos. Just everybody on the wrong page as far as teammates. Balls just passed out of bounds into touch. Nobody near, no pressure on, just giving balls away. Rivera reaching out with the right foot was able to deflect it, but it lands at the feet of Jordy. Texans not allowing Olympiacos to get any further. Valadez plays it up the left channel. Support coming. Valadez gets it back. Muscled off the ball momentarily by Jordy. Valadez gets it back. McKaylee with a one-touch pass. Now makes the run into the area. Valadez was looking for the volley, but a defender was there for Olympiacos. I think it might have been Nathan Hilton. Sent out to halfway. Moreno not able to corral it. It's a 50-50 duel. Moreno has it now for the Texans. Gets it to Rivera. Rivera trying to play it into the path of Torres, but it's a sliding tackle that wins the ball for Olympiacos. It's sent back now to Baruman. Baruman to Wainia. Boy, Wainia made a couple of plays earlier in the second half that kept this game scoreless. We don't want to overlook those plays yeah. that allowed the Texans to take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, two vital tackles to keep Olympiacos off the scoreboard. Torres reaches halfway. Gets it to Hajimu. <laughs> McKaylee with a nice pass. Rivera heads it to the end line, puts it inside the six yard box. The flag is up. Throw for Olympiacos. At this point, Olympiacos is just going to have to start. They're going to have to take some chances, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, just start putting the ball forward, finding the target player, run off of them. They're about 13 and a half minutes from full time. They get into Dallas territory, but they haven't spent much time at all in the attacking third. Yeah. Just can't break down this Texan midfield. And now the Texans are back defending this 1-0 lead, making it even tougher for Olympiacos. Another duel. And they'll give this ball to Dallas on a throw. Olympiacos trying to stay in this game emotionally right now. Torres will throw in for the Texans. Tahaj will move. The ball is lost. I think both coaches are frustrated with the way this <laughs> game has been played today. Roger Jimenez for Olympiacos and Hassan Rudaki of the Dallas Texans. They both had that exasperated look at different <laughs> times during this game. Yeah, it's been a tough one to watch. It really has. But there was a very creative goal. It was a great, great goal. goal. There was a moment of brilliance in this game for sure. And Guy McKaylee scored the goal in the 60th minute. Working along with Valadez, they set up the goal. McKaylee with a great finish after really setting it up with a nice back heel pass. This is McKaylee backpedaling now. And McKaylee has control of it for the Texans. Hajimu gets taken down by Jimenez, but it'll be a throw for Dallas. Dallas, Dallas Texans now, no, no hurry whatsoever. Yep, took words right out of my mouth. This ball will be thrown in by Torres. Puts it at the feet of McKaylee. Kaylee puts it to the top of the six yard box. It's cleared, but straight up. Waste trying to get there for the Texans. And 
Jay Norris explaining his call as the foul goes against Dallas. Olympiacos gets a free kick from halfway. Restarting play is Jake Jimenez. Jimenez finds Pounds. Pounds moves in through traffic to the top of the box, takes a shot, and then a diving Elijah Baruman makes a save. They're going to off sides there. The flag goes up. Here in the 70th minute, time running out on Olympiacos. Good strike. Baruman gets it to halfway, knocked down by the right foot of Jordy. Turned over to the Texans to get it back to their keeper, Baruman. Baruman then finds Torres. Torres moves up the right side, gets it to Rivera, back to Torres. Finds Moreno. Right now for the Texans, you just want to keep possession. No cheap giveaways here in the last nine minutes. Wage playing a long ball. Not what I expected there. Had a man making a run of the left channel. They do win the corner and kick. They get a corner kick out of this, yep. This will give the Texans a real chance to stall now. It'll be Haj Amu delivering this the fourth corner of the game for the Texans. Texans with only four in the box. Rivera comes charging out. There's a header, and I'll tell you what, Guy McKaylee was just a foot away from scoring his second goal. Kaylee wishes he had that one back. He just would have got a little bit of contact to redirect that ball. The second goal would pretty much ice this game for the Texans. Yeah, you see the replay, the ball's played short. Nice ball across. Just unable to direct that one on frame. Moreno in the center circle has it for the Texans who lead one nil in the 72nd minute after McKaylee scored in the 60th minute. Moreno. You really haven't seen any tactical change by Olympiacos here. You'd think they would have pushed another player up right. top, up forward. They stayed with the lone they, striker up top. They've made four substitutions. Really hasn't made a difference, either tactically or in terms of the energy that they brought to the pitch. It hasn't. That ball eludes the left foot of Jake Jimenez, and that's out of play. For Olympiacos, this has not been the beautiful game. <laughs> no, no, it's you know, it's been a defensive struggle. They would be happy to win ugly here this afternoon, though. Absolutely, I mean, they'll they... need a goal in order to do that. McKaylee trying to loop it over to Valadez. Olympiacos sending it into Dallas territory. It gets headed by Wainia, and the Texans control. Wage with another long ball. Hajamu making a run up the right side, but moving to his left, Diego Saldivar has it on a bounce and gets it out to Jimenez. Torres has it for the Texans. Played back to San Martin. San Martin will send it back to Baruman. Back to San Martin. Out of play. Well, you know, let's be fair, the Texans have made their fair share of poor passes as well. Yeah, but again, it goes back, a lot of it goes back to the six games in seven days, a lot of soccer being played, uh, some tired legs, lots of mistakes made. But and you know, the pressure of playing in this championship game. Yeah, absolutely. But you look at Olympiacos in the group play, I mean, they only scored the group play and knockout stage 10 goals, right? So it's less than a a little bit less than two goals a game, and so you just don't know where the goals are going to come from. Defensively, they only gave up one. So. McKaylee looking for an opportunity here to put the game away. He was looking for a foul call, none forthcoming. Olympiaco is able to keep the ball in play as Santos gets to it. 
Waish with the header for the Texans. Lands at the feet of Rivera. Rivera gets it to Torres. Torres to Hajamu. Back to Torres. And I'm beginning to think the Texans won't make any substitutions. Yeah, they might make a couple late just to run some clock. Romero in the middle third. Draws some attention. Is able to play it back to Wainia. Again, Moreno. And Moreno's been a pivotal figure in the midfield today. He has been good in the midfield. Making some good penetrating passes. This time Torres not able to make the connection with McKaylee. And I, I do, Deb, I think a lot of it is fatigue here. Yeah. Just guys not not moving and not because the desire is not there. They're just physically exhausted. Right. Yeah, that's why you've seen so many errors. David Rodriguez trying to get to it, but it's Baruma coming off his line to cradle it in for the Texans who are starting to sense victory here. They're less than five minutes away from full time. And at this juncture, you wouldn't expect a lot of stoppage time to be added. Play's been fairly continuous here in the second half. Olympiacos has control of it, but still on their side of halfway. Jordy gets it at halfway. Moreno heads it for the Texans. Valadez and McKaylee may have something cooking. McKaylee, though, not able to control it initially. Still battling for possession with Christopher Santos of Olympiacos. A foul is called, and Olympiacos gets the free kick from halfway on the right side. Yeah, it's a, something you don't need to do is commit a foul there in half, half field and let this Olympiacos team send the ball into the box. There it is, a ball over the top. Searching for Torres. The Texans are able to clear it. The ball gets knotted over to Sandoval, who came on as a substitute. Sandoval playing it to Santos. Olympiacos playing a fairly deliberate style here. Now there's the long ball over the top. Rodriguez, oh, he had a chance with the left foot. A little volley, and Baruma dives to his left, and he makes a big time save. It's still 1-0 Texans. Nice save by Baruma there. Takes his ball out of the air with his left foot cleanly. Oh, for just a second there, it looked like Rodriguez was going to find the far side netting. And tie this game at one. Hajamu has it for the Texans. Back to Rivera. They work a little two-man game. Rivera comes up the right side. He's just going to take it to the corner and stand on it. Yeah, smart play Gets there. fouled there. Smart the foul is called against Sandoval, the substitution. Yeah, that is a smart play, smart isn't play. it? Smart play. Take it to the corner, knowing time's more important right now to run off to getting another goal. McKaylee goes down with an apparent cramp. I'm sure Olympiacos is a little cynical about this. But stoppage time will be added. We're in the 79th minute. Remember, these are 40-minute halves. The U-17, U-18, and U-19 championships coming up on Easter Sunday, which is always the culmination of Dallas Cup, an annual event held during Easter week, Palm Sunday through Easter Sunday. So the calendar dates change every year. That ball's out of play. A throw coming up. The Texans stalling, draining more time. They're Fans have really come to life since McKaylee scored the goal in the 60th minute, giving them this 1-0 lead. They're trying to hold on for just a couple of more minutes and win another boot and ball trophy. I think 
the assistant called a foul here. Yeah, things are getting a little out of control here in the corner. Oh, a yellow card is going to be shown yeah, to both, to both players. So the Dallas Texans. Yeah, just a little after the play action. Looked like they were going to make a substitution, but looked like Vincent Corral was going to come into the match, but that's not the case. Rivera got the yellow card, I believe, for the Texans, and we'll wait on the announcement to see who got the card for Olympiacos. McKaylee going over Sandoval to the corner. Standing on it as the clock runs. We're two seconds from full time. We'll see how much stoppage time is added here. One minute of stoppage time. The Texans fans <laughs> like that. Throw in for McKaylee to Rivera. Again, just standing on the ball in the corner. Another throw for Dallas. And the chances are looking pretty dim for Olympiacos right now. Not much time left. Texas deep in Olympiacos territory and content to stay there. Finally, a goal kick for Olympiacos. Not able to do much with that. It gets past McKaylee though. Volley by Ocampo. Comes to Valdez, he takes a shot, and there's a diving save for Saldivar to keep it 1-0 in the waning moments of this U16 championship game. Nice save by Salvador. There, gets hands to it to push that ball wide for a corner kick for the Texans. We've seen both keepers, Baruman and now Saldivar, make big time saves here in the second half. Yeah, really nice save. Corner kick, and that's going to be the shortest corner kick in the history of soccer. And the Texans pour onto the field as the final whistle sounds. The Texans get a goal from Guy McKaylee in the 60th minute, and they defeat Olympiacos from Huntington Beach, California, 1-0. And the Dallas Texans, a rich history at Dallas Cup, winning 12 championships, make it 13 as this U16 side is ready to lift the boot and ball trophy deep in the heart of Texas. The Texans win one nil. With over 200 flavor notes to discover, every sip of Woodford Reserve bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. see the 13th boot and ball in the trophy case, they're not going to ask, was that scintillating soccer? They're just going to say the Texans won it 1-0. We mentioned that they had won a championship 12 previous times, but you got to go back to 2009 when they won the U19, U14, and U13. Today they win the U16, which they also won in 2008 and in 2006. The Texans beating Olympiacos 1-0, and uh, there's not a lot of highlights, but there are some. The Texans may have played some of their best soccer early in the game. There was an opportunity with a free kick for Olympiacos, and then a lot of the game was played in the middle third. Saldivar making a save there, denying McKaylee, but they couldn't keep McKaylee off the board for the entire game. Moreno had a chance here, but missed it wide. And this ball may have actually gone over the line, but they did not call it a goal. The Texans do eventually win the game 1-0. And you can see Baruman was kind of getting frustrated there. This is the McKaylee goal. It's a brilliant strike and a great finish. And the Texans kind of had a sense that they had the game won at that point. But the Olympiacos did get a couple of opportunities. That one from Pounce. And then they got this Rodriguez volley as Baruman dives to his left to make that stop. 
securing a 1-0 victory for the Texans. What impressed you most about the Dallas effort? Well, I think they just stuck with their game plan. I mean, you know, defensively, they're strong. They were giving Olympiacos no time on the ball whatsoever. And when they had their opportunity, they took it. The final score this afternoon is at the site of the National Soccer Hall of Fame, Toyota Stadium in Frisco, the Dallas Texans won. Olympiacos from Huntington Beach, California, nil. For Dev Reeves, I'm Pete Stein saying so long. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.